Purcell, 1659 to 1695, English. Famed above all for Ditto and Aeneas, the first true English opera, Purcell was one of the greatest and most versatile composers of the Baroque period. During his brief yet hectic lifetime, Henry Purcell was acknowledged as unequalled among English composers. After his premature death at the age of 36, he was hailed by contemporary commentators as our all-pleasing Britain's Orpheus and the delight of the nation and the wonder of the world. A century later, he had become one of our musical Shakespeare. None of the composers of his day matched his melodic genius or his inspired eclecticism, which absorbed the fashionable contential styles of Lily and Corelli without sacrificing a quintessential Englishness. His great sensitivity to the rhythms of English language remains unsurpassed. Yet the biography of the composer who became a national icon remains fragmentary. What is certain is that he was born into a family of court musicians in 1659, grew up in the shadow of Westmore Abbey, London, and was one of the twelve boy trebles in Chapel Royale. At the age of 16, he was appointed composer in ordinary for the King's Violins. In 1679, he became organist of Westmore Abbey, and a year or two later, he married Francis Peters. Building a career. For the next decade, Purcell's career centered in on court and chapel. With the production of verse anthems, royal odes, royal welcome songs, in which the music repeatedly transcends the synophantic text, and in 1685, coronation anthems for James II. His sets of vile fantasias and the Italianate sonatas in three and four parts reveal his genius and not least in their rich chromatic harmonies the poignant concise concise ditto and aeneas 1683 to 1689 tells the story of, of the love between aeneas hero of virgil's epic poem the aeneid and the carthaginian queen ditto who commits suicide when Aeneas is tricked into abandoning her. After James II was overthrown in 1688, Purcell's creative activities broadened. From 1689, he provided birthday odes for Queen Mary II. But with the militaristic William III opposed to elaborate church music, he now began to write from a broader middle-class audience in the published set of choice eras and songs, in incidental music for plays and in the semi-operas, as the contemporary writer Roger North dubbed them. For the Dorset Garden Theatre of Fleet Street, Purcell the court composer had morphed into a composer for the commercial stage. All sung opera that dangerously exotic Italian import was still deemed alien to the robust English temperament. The recipe for public success was to take an existing play, fill it and stuff it with music, dance and spectacular scenic effects. These multimedia extravaganzas involving separate casts of actors, dancers and singers present a serious challenge to today's producers and are therefore rarely performed. Yet the fourth semi-operas, De Lucletian, King Arthur, The Fairy Queen and The Indian Queen from Purcell's final years contain some of his most atmospheric and melodically alluring music. <laughs>